This is Twit. This one's kind of interesting on a couple of levels, but um, they're adding a, well, they're actually going to call it gallery. It's a view in File Explorer. So if you're looking at a folder full of photos, it will do a gallery view, which doesn't just look like, but is in fact identical to the all photos view in the photos app that's in windows 11 which is actually kind of nice you can scroll down you can go by uh you can, we'll show you the years of all the photos and stuff you can you can it makes makes it easy to kind of get through a big set of photos um but the interesting thing about this to me is not that they're adding it to photo gallery i mean this is or to a file explorer this is kind of something microsoft has worked on on and off since i don't know windows vista <laughs> basically i mean there's been stuff like this actually even I guess even Windows XP technically had something a little bit like this. Um, but rather that functionality that literally clearly came right out of the Photos app is being integrated elsewhere. Um, we just learned that Microsoft Edge got the photo editing functionality from the Photos app. Yeah, I think, in, yeah, actually in the stable shipping version. So if you have one, whatever the version, 111, I think is the current version. Um, you actually have a way to edit images on the web using the exact interface that you use in the Photos app, but built into the Edge application. So it's kind of interesting seeing them bring that functionality elsewhere. So that's kind of cool. And then separately, they're also- In Windows, like this is, a, yeah. you know, this used to be the Microsoft's whole shtick, right? The embrace, extend, extinguish kind of mindset where you take right. an app and just make it part of Windows. Now they're doing it to their own apps. And they're like, doing it to parts of their apps. Like it's kind of like a component of an app, you know, if you will, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. I don't know. It also simplifies your interface. Like you, you go look for files first and you look for pictures and then you're already got your tools. in. Why do you then have to go to an app and navigate to that folder to get to those photos? Yeah, that's actually, that's, I mean, that's always been the central dilemma of photo management probably on any operating system is, do you do it right in the file system, which to, to me has always worked out pretty well, or mm -hmm. do you do it in a dedicated app? Right. Know, I, so they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're blurring lines. Or it's the file system mindset. Well, they've been screwing around with file, <laughs> file Explorer a lot lately. So obviously with 22H2, uh, they added the tabs. Uh, there's a session at Build where they're going to talk about how they added the Windows app SDK um, to File Explorer, which is kind of interesting because they were using something called XAML Islands to get this kind of modern look and feel in File Explorer, which is a classic, you know, Win32 app really under the covers. Um, what they found was that it was too limited and um, they had to contort it for their own needs, which is not something they could provide to the public. So they went with the Windows app to SDK and mark my words, what you're going to discover is they had to contort that to their own needs too. And that whatever they did to File Explorer is not going to be something you're going to be able to do in your own apps. I guarantee, I a hundred percent guarantee it, but I will wait and see. I can't wait, but we'll see. Um, anyway, there's been a lot going on with File Explorer, which is kind of neat because File Explorer, you know, is an app that's based on Explorer.exe. It's been around since Windows The younger generation, a lot of them don't think about files at all. Yeah. You know, they, they, they don't know where to There was a great set of articles written recently from multiple sources we were talking about. They just don't know where their files are put because that's not a thing. It's not a thing. You can't yeah, trust people like this, Richard. Record. These people... Yeah. They don't know, you know, this is not, that's not acceptable. You need to know where your files are. Do you? Do you really? <laughs> I think you do. Well, as long as you know they're safe, I guess. What is it? It's yeah. 5 p.m. Do you know where your files are? Yeah. Your files were right where you left them. Yeah, yeah I, I, know, I know what you're talking about, Richard. That's the problem. The, the um, professors, uh, specifically, there was a professor of like graphic design or some sort of uh, mm -hmm. art, and they had to teach their students how to install uh, font files because right. the, the concept of a desktop and where you put files and what folder to make things yeah. work was that just structure. I mean, and again, these are all metaphors are created for the limitations of machines at the time. Mm -hmm. Sure. The question is, are those metaphors still relevant? Do we have to know any of this stuff? You know, in a, in, now I'm pulling up the IT hat, right? Like in a zero trust world right. where my identity associates to that file, associates to the resources that are available to me, that is a sufficient. Unless you have my identity, you cannot access those files. You cannot see those files. Sure. And knowing the details of how and where they're stored is kind of irrelevant. So 
Right. And and this is, uh, you can apply this to a lot of different things. So back in the day, and actually I'm sure today, a lot of old timers, especially will organize their email into folders, right? And they, they get an email from work and they either use a rule or they just move it over and like this goes there and this goes there. And they do this because they want to be able to find things, right? And my argument against this now is when you can use search to find anything instantly, maybe it doesn't matter so much, right? Yeah. And I, ha I will say I have found I use a very specific file uh, structure for, and I use OneDrive. Uh, every once in a while, I can't find something that I'm looking for. And what I found is I don't search in Windows because <laughs> that, does, that never works. That's hilarious. You, you but I do you want your job. <laughs> you can, but, but, I, my, my, but my time's valuable. So what I do is I go to OneDrive.com <laughs> on the web and I just, I don't have to go into a folder. I just search for the thing, uh, any part of it. And it finds it instantly. I mean, every single time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's interesting what you're saying, Paul, because we had a, someone call in on ask the tech guys and was saying, I, I'm trying to figure out how to speed up my search. Every time I try to search for something, uh, on, uh, windows, on it takes yeah. forever to find what I'm looking for. I've got, they had like yeah. two OneDrive drives, I guess, and they just right. couldn't get anything. So you actually don't use the built-in. No, I, there is, there's a lot, so there's a lot of back and forth on this, right? I'm sure what you guys looked at was like the indexing options dialogue yep. that still exists in windows, which is kind of crazy. Um, and you can go in and you can kind of screw around with that. You can say like, what, what is this thing going to index? You know, yada, yada, yada. Um, technically everything, if you're using OneDrive and, uh, you know, to, for your files, I mean, and, and, it's inside your user profile unless you moved it. Um, it that's indexed. Like it should, it should find that stuff very quickly. Um, my experience <laughs> is that that's not how that works. So if it's super important, I just need to get going. Um, I, I just use the, the web search always works. Always works. Someone is saying use everything to search quickly for files on Windows. Is everything an app? Is everything a, a no, search? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what everything is. Um, they yeah okay anyway sorry that that was not no it's okay. actually no back back in the day you know this was a key thing they were going to solve in Longhorn right and one of the embarrassing things that came out during that era was Apple saw that Microsoft was struggling to release Longhorn and they said how much of this can we do quick and there's a there's an amazing probably couple of but one I can remember in particular of keynotes for Apple events where they uh, added. Uh, what Sherlock was probably called at the time, but whatever desktop search to tiger, I think it was. And it was instant. And the interface was very reminiscent of what they had in iTunes. In fact, they, um, they compared it to as they said, we already created this great indexing, you know, technology for iTunes. So we're going to use it in the, in the finder, you know, and they just made Microsoft look stupid. And the hilarious thing is that when windows Vista finally shipped, that's not hilarious. It's sad really, but is that, we never had this thing we promised everybody it all for instant cool. desktop search. It all got, you know, it all went fine because, you know, WinFS never happened and yeah. all these ideas they had for the file all system. All that code ended up in other places, but they the things they were proposing in 2003 never came to pass. No. And so that's always been kind of an Achilles heel on the Windows side. I mean, I interestingly, it might have been 22H2. They they were just talking about this again, They Microsoft. uh about making desktop search more instantaneous, but I, that's, I don't know, not to me, it's never been great. I did want to uh, follow up. It's a search tool from voidtools.com. Okay. And there's, there are rave reviews in the chat room about using everything to search on Microsoft, uh, or excuse me, on Windows uh, yeah. via the oh, desktop. Interesting. Okay. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twit, which costs seven bucks a month. Or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of Home Theater Geekitude.